So we've been talking about graphing things like this, right? And talking about what's the domain? Um, you know, x can't be negative one because we'd be dividing by zero. Or ideas like as x gets really big, as x approaches infinity, these two terms start to take over. So y would approach three because three x over x, you know, three over a million divided by a million is, is three. three. Three times a million minus five over a million minus one, the minus five and the minus one are so tiny, you know, they don't matter or make it a billion and it gets closer and closer to three. So we've had this extreme behavior talking about it. We've also talked about how sometimes um, we'll get holes, right? Like if I had this X minus five over X plus five times X minus five, that divides out. So it's basically the same as this graph, but with a hole at positive five. Um, when, so X can't be positive five. Now, sometimes uh, we'll have a shape like this where nothing's going to cancel out on us. But we have, um, since these are one power apart, S squared on top and X on the bottom, as X gets really big, this tends to X, it seems like. So it grows, it feels like it grows without bound, but X divided by X is X, so it makes a straight line. So we can actually, from here, have what's called a slant asymptote. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like after we find it. And to find the slant asymptote, what you do is you just actually do this division. Um, and what's left over is the slant asymptote. So I'm going to use synthetic division to do this. So I'm going to grab the 0, the negative 3, and uh, grab the asymptotes from here. So 1x squared, 1x, negative 25. And just do it. Bring it down, multiply add, multiply, and add. And so notice we have this remainder, right? Like after we've done this division, this is the same as x minus 2 plus, uh, I'll say minus because it's a negative 19, minus uh, 19 over x plus 3. Like these are equivalent to each other. Um, for our graphing, though, this is much easier to graph. But this lets us think about what happens to this as x gets really big, as x approaches infinity. Notice this term right here, as x gets really big, you got 19 divided by big, which is basically zero. So as x approaches infinity, this thing gets closer and closer to this line, and that's our slant asymptote. So if you've got uh, one degree apart, higher degree in the top, you can actually do the division and it shows you where the slant asymptote is. Let me grab Desmos and graph this so we can you can see what I mean. Suppose x squared minus 25. So there it is. And you see how it's kind of got this slant thing going on? It still has that horizontal, uh, that vertical asymptote at negative three, right? So it's got this slant asymptote. I'm going to throw the the graph that we said that it, the line that we said it was in there. And we said it was x minus two. And just, I'll just make it dotted. Just why not? Because I can. Um, and notice as I zoom out, what happens is our function, as x gets really big gets closer and closer. It starts to become that line. It doesn't, it's not actually that line, but it gets really close to it. If we zoom out far enough, it's hard to tell them apart with the exception from the up and down part. So the slant asymptote, like I said before, happens when we've got like uh, one degree apart here. And our, our examples will be a quadratic over, over a linear. So here's another example so we can find the slant asymptote for it. All the other stuff that we've been doing applies, right? Um, vertical asymptotes. It won't have both a slant and a horizontal asymptote. It'll only have one of the two. So on this one, I could try and factor that, see if something cancels out. It's not going to. So this is a good candidate for slant asymptote, right? X squared over X. So I'm actually going to do this division. Grab the zero. Doing that synthetic division. 3X squared, negative 2X plus 1. Bring it down, multiply add, multiply, add, there's a remainder of two. So the slant asymptote is at x plus one. And then I can do all the rest of my, um, 
analysis that we were doing before as well. X squared over X. So let's do the division. 2 X squared minus, oh, I don't need the X squared. I'm doing synthetic division. 1x squared, negative 4x and 1. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add. So my slant asymptote would be x minus 2. And again, that's not part of the shape. That helps frame the shape, right? So if I wanted to do some more analysis on this one, I know that it has a slant asymptote here. I know that uh, x equals 2 would be my um, vertical asymptote. So I'll sketch from here. And have an asymptote here. And then if I graph the line y equals uh, x minus 2, slope of 1, but it goes through negative 2. So there's my slant asymptote right here. And it's either going to be in here and in here, or it's going to be, uh, whoops, sorry about that or it's going to be out here and out here. But it's going to be like framed inside those asymptotes. And then, like I said, all the other stuff that we've done, it all applies to this as well. We could find x-intercepts, y-intercepts if they exist, uh, get some other points, and get them all in there. All right, that was a, that was a pretty, pretty quick um, lecture. Uh, one, thing, one thing I do want to add to this about this land asymptote we could say, as x approaches infinity, y approaches that, x minus 2. All right, uh, give me some questions. Post them in the forum. Message me. Do your assignments. Let me know how it's going.